In the world of data processing, there are two main approaches, batch processing and stream processing. Now we have already discussed stream processing in my previous video, which is the process of analyzing and processing data in real time as it is being generated. Batch processing on the other hand is the process of analyzing and processing data in large chunks or batches after it has been collected and stored. Unlike stream processing where data is analyzed as it's generated, batch processing collects and processes data over a period of time, typically in scheduled intervals. So while stream processing is ideal for real-time insights, batch processing is often used for tasks that don't require immediate results or where data can be collected over time before analysis. Batch processing is old school but still a very powerful data processing method that every software engineer should know. In this video, I'll start with the use cases for batch processing, how businesses can benefit from it, followed by its core technical aspects. By the end of this video, you should have an idea of how to work with batches effectively in your working environment. So let's get started. In today's interconnected world, every human action translates into an event within the system whether it's buying clothes online or in person, browsing through social media feeds or riding with services like Uber. Naturally, each of these events undergoes some form of processing. Some events demand swift action and are processed instantly. For example, after concluding a trip with Uber, you promptly receive the ride receipt within moments. Typically, the relationship between input and output in such cases is one-to-one. -one. Alternatively, certain events are more valuable when processed together in background. For instance, think about creating monthly reports where all transactions from that month are combined. Here, many inputs result in one output, meaning many to one. This is known as batch processing. Typically, we opt for batch processing for two primary reasons, business necessity and efficiency. Some outputs rely on the availability of series of records. For instance, generating end of month reports, processing payroll, managing, billing, and invoicing systems all necessitate a continuous stream of data. Missing even a single day's transaction could lead to inaccuracies in the final output. Here is an example of common end of day payment transactions in banking, along with some sample fields that might contain transaction type, such as debit card purchases, credit card payments, the date and time of the transaction, and a reference number, which could be a unique identifier for the transaction. Now, certain hmm. data processing tasks such as archiving, filtering, and computation can be resource intensive when performed on individual records. We'll explore this further in the subsequent technical section. But to illustrate here, consider a trip to the supermarket where you purchase 10 products. It's far more efficient to check out all items in one go rather than making 10 separate trips back and forth. This same efficiency principle underpins batch processing which is widely employed across various domains. The majority of batch processing jobs follow a repetitive schedule, whether executed hourly, daily, or monthly. Developers leverage scheduling mechanisms to automate batch jobs, reducing the need of manual intervention and enhancing overall efficiency. At a high level, batch processing involves three steps, data collection, data processing, and data storage or output. In batch processing, data is collected over a period of time until a sufficient amount is accumulated for processing. This data can come from various sources such as database, logs, files, or even streaming sources where the data is collected and stored for later analysis. Once a batch of data is collected, it is processed in bulk. This involves applying various operations like filtering, sorting, aggregating, and analyzing the data according to predefined criteria or business logic. After processing, the results are typically stored in a data warehouse, database, or other storage systems for further analysis, reporting, or decision making. Batch processing jobs may also generate reports or visualizations that provide insights into the process data. Now let's take a closer look at the technical aspects and how to design a batch processing system. A batch is a group of records with same attributes. Each record can be a fact like a bank transaction. Imagine the following example. You implement a logic to sum the quantity of all the products in a batch. Rows with non-numeric values will certainly break the code. A common strategy involves implementing a schema check to the batch. You can store data in a relational database with a data type defined. You can also use a schema file such as Apache Avro, Protobuf, or XST, which stands for XML Schema Definition, to examine the data. The more rigid the schema, the more resilient the code becomes, making it less prone to breaking. Let's look at an example of large bank processing millions of transactions daily. 
The bank aims to generate hourly reports to assess the total transactions within the hour for each payment method, example MasterCard or Visa, etc. Now the question is, how would you design a batch? A batch per day, per hour, per minute, or maybe a per payment method? We can certainly create a batch per hour, for example, for all records from Jan 1st, 2024, 10am to Jan 1st, 2024, 11am. So now if you need to calculate the sum for each payment method, your query might look like this. Notice that here we utilize group by clause to compute the sum for each payment method separately. What if we calculate the sum for all payment methods simultaneously? In fact, we will create one batch for each payment method per hour, compute the sum for each batch in parallel and combine the results in the end. In this way, we create smaller batches but will potentially improve the performance. What we are attempting to accomplish here is to mimic a distributed data processing system by splitting a large batch into smaller batches and processing them concurrently to achieve the best performance. But what if there are more than 10 million records in one batch? With a powerful machine, we may manage. Without such capacity, the calculation will become inefficient. So choosing a batch size involves a lot of trade-offs. A large batch simplifies operations as we only need to deal with single file and less I.O. operations. However, the performance can be bottlenecked by a singular computation resource. At the same time, we don't want to create too many small batches because merging them will become a heavy task, nullifying the time saved earlier. Using high cardinality columns like IDs or timestamps for which batch splitting is a recipe for creating many small and ineffective batches. So always aim for low cardinality columns like date, category or method instead as they have fewer unique values and will lead to larger, more efficient batches that get your work done quicker. Additionally, the quantity of small batches should ideally align with the available resources. For instance, if there are 100 small batches but only 10 servers available, a maximum of 10 batches will be processed concurrently rather than the entire set of 100. So it's crucial to identify the bottleneck. To enhance this situation, we can either augment the number of resources or merge small batches into medium-sized ones, effectively leveraging the available resources to their maximum capacity. Now, we have touched on the time-saving advantages of batch processing, but where exactly? Let's revisit the supermarket analogy. Which task consumes the most time? Is it scanning the product or calculating the amount? Not quite. It's a journey to retrieve a product from the shelf and return to the checkout counter. The farther the shelf, the longer the process takes. This task of fetching products corresponds to an I.O. operation in a data processing job. When data resides in memory, the distance is shorter. However, if the data is stored on a remote server, the distance becomes more significant. The concept is clear. Batch processing significantly improves job performance by reducing the number of I.O. operations required. Now every batch process follows a life cycle and understanding this life cycle is crucial for efficient processing. Let's revisit our example of the end of day payments transaction of a bank. While the list of transactions forms the core content of batch, supplementary details such as the batch start and end times from a business perspective and the batch ingestion time from a technical perspective are equally essential. These additional pieces of information are particularly valuable during reprocessing. They aid developers in comprehending the batch status and detecting any anomalies. For instance, if a batch containing payments made between January 1st, 2024, 10am and January 1st, 2024, 11am is only ingested on January 2nd, 2024, it indicates a potential issue with the ingestion layer. Tracking the ingestion time also helps in preventing duplicate entries. Furthermore, associating a code version with the batch processing enables developers to trace and troubleshoot issues linked to specific code versions. These metadata elements can be incorporated into batch in various ways. One approach is to include a metadata column within the batch itself. While this simplifies information retrieval, it adds overhead to the storage. For example, in Apache Kafka, although primarily a real-time processing engine, it operates with batches, with each message containing metadata in its header. Alternatively, metadata can be stored separately and linked to the batch, enhancing the efficiency of metadata querying. Alright, on to the final point, another prevalent use of batch processing is to handle a collection of CDC or change data capture events. For instance, let's consider a supermarket aiming to monitor the daily inventory status of all products with the data source being a stream of restock and sell events. So how do we tackle this? Now a straightforward solution might involve aggregating all events, 
since the shop's inception every day. I know, it doesn't sound quite right. The challenge here lies in the fact that the data source consists of deltas, and aggregating only today's events won't yield the accurate final inventory since it merely represents the total delta for the day. A more effective approach is to generate daily inventory snapshots. Let's assume the shop opens on Jan 1st, 2024 and initially restocks 100 apples and 200 bananas. This initial stock serves as the inventory for Jan 1st, 2024. On the subsequent day, instead of aggregating events from two days, we merge the inventory from day one with the delta events from the day two. Similarly, on day three, we obtain the result by combining the inventory from day two with the delta events from day three. This method significantly boosts efficiency by producing a daily inventory snapshot, thereby reducing the data size for each job. We can further minimize the data size by generating hourly snapshots and so on. Additionally, the daily snapshot table can aid the business in making strategic decisions regarding inventory management. Since batch processing deals with large data sets, it often requires distributed computing frameworks like Apache Hadoop or Apache Spark to efficiently process the data in parallel across multiple nodes. Batch processing is good choice for many tasks, such as generating reports. Batch processing is often used to generate reports on historical data. For example, a company might use batch processing to generate monthly sales reports, or a bank might use batch processing to process daily transactions at night. Batch processing can be also used to train machine learning models on large datasets. In fact, even a streaming service might use batch processing to train recommendation model. This would involve collecting a large dataset of user viewing history and then processing it in a single batch job to train the model. While batch processing offers advantages in handling large volumes of data efficiently, there are scenarios where it may not be the most suitable approach. When real-time data processing is crucial, such as in financial trading, online gaming, or systems that involve continuous streaming, streaming data that requires immediate response, batch processing is not the best method. And I highly recommend diving deeper into real-time processing methods, a topic that I have extensively covered in two of my previous videos. In my basics of streaming video installment, I provide a comprehensive overview with the example usage in AWS and with microservices. While in my dedicated video streaming video, I delve into the intricacies of high-quality real-time streaming and protocols. So if you are keen on mastering the art of seamless streaming experiences, be sure to check out those resources. Now, while batch processing may not provide real-time insights like stream processing, it is well suited for tasks that involve historical analysis, periodic reporting, and batch-oriented data processing tasks. By understanding the principles and practical applications of batch processing, organizations can harness its potential to gain valuable insights and drive informed decision making.